Hey guys, this is Tim from Tutorials with Tim. This is a kind of an update video, I'm making a new video. There's some comments on uh, the 747 or 737 startup video that I did, teaching you guys how to start it up. Um, I did it at night. So, anyways, just kind of addressing some of the comments there, um, so you can kind of see now. You can see the mouse movements and um, you know so on and so forth. So. And it's daytime, so I do apologize. That was kind of one of my first videos that I did. Um, didn't take that stuff into consideration, so I do apologize for that. But um, so, assuming that this is your first time <coughs> in this aircraft, um, this is going to be sort of the view that you're going to be seeing. So, I'm going to go over a few of the tips and tricks here. So, if you use your your arrow keys, you can move up, down, left, right. Um, you can move all sorts of different, you know, directions in different ways. Now, if you get into a position to where like the down or up won't work, you have to just move to the side because chances are you're hitting something in the the cockpit and it won't, you know, simulates that. So, um, and then we'll sh I'll show you how to set up your view and save your view on your number pad. So when I hit, you know, my numbers, I've already got, you know, my specific views. You know saved that uh, that I like so <clears throat> I'll show you how to do that so let's say you you know move around whatever and you find the perfect view this is you know my if you hold control and then just whatever number you want so if you want it to be number five um, it's kind of like a centered view you can just hit control five on your number pad and then that'll save it so like I hit one because step one for you know startup is obviously you need to access your top control so um, so up here in the startup process um, the first things first is you want to obviously turn your knob to battery and over here turn your actual battery on and you'll see some lights light up and you might hear some noises <clears throat> so that's obviously step one so we go from the battery down to standby power and turn that over to auto and then you can close the cap you can kind of continue to go down this. Um, your process of how you remember it is, is up to you. Um, but I like to turn the electronics on first, obviously. Then I'll come over here and I'll continue my electronic part. And I'll turn on my hydraulics and my electrical over with these switches right here. And then go up here to the heat and turn the probes on as well. And depending on temperature or stuff like that, there's your anti-ice, your engine ice, and then so on and so forth. Come over here to yaw damper and turn your yaw damper on and that's pretty much it as far as switches go now to you know actually if you look you'll see you have your power down here your master master caution lights on you just to clear that anyways but we'll go up here and we'll start the apu so after you've turned everything on here you can just go ahead and turn your fuel pumps on as well um, and you can turn them all on. I've seen videos. We'll only turn one on. It it doesn't really matter on this. So you can turn them all on, because fuel is still not flowing to the engines at this point, anyways. You're just turning the pumps on. And then over here, where's APU? Go ahead and click that down twice to start, and you'll hear it to start starting up there. <coughs> and then once it kind of levels out over here in your transfer you'll start you'll see your lights come on where you can go ahead and turn your generators on for your APU on both sides there and now you can see that you're getting some amperage now over here in your APU generator go ahead and turn that on to APU gen which is straight up now that's letting it draw the power from the generator and that's pretty much it for now up on top so let's go back here to the center view or to your window view Clear that master caution. Now if you right click and hold the right mouse button down, you can manually move um, you know, your view around, whatever you want to look at. Um, and so over here, but I, you know, again, I have different views saved. So we'll come over here to this view. We're going to go ahead and <coughs> turn our transponder on to TARA. So that's all. all on. Zoom out a bit. I'm good. Well, I'm going to test our faults. 
get there. And we're good there. So now to clear that, just go up here, fire warning, master caution, and everything's cleared. So that's some basic, you know, your basic test. But as far as that, the aircraft is on power wise and APU wise. So to start up, once you push back, you know, and, and so when you're ready to, you know, push back and start, it's simple. So you're just going to come back down to this view here and you're going to turn your fuel cutoffs on to idle. Okay, make sure, obviously, throttles back all the way, but your idle, your fuel cutoff is turned to idle. And then you can come up here and just click over to ground. Oh, but first you have to turn your APU bleed on to provide the air to turn the, you know, the actual turbines over. So just turn that on and you'll start to hear the engines wind up. And you can see here that they're starting up. And once your start valve closes, you can go ahead and you can go over and click engine number two over to ground. And you'll see that one starting up as well. And there you go. So once the engines are started up, you'll see two new, two new lights here in your transfer. You can go ahead and click this knob over to Gen 1 or Gen 2, and then just turn these on. And now you're drawing your, your charging batteries and you're running off your engines now versus the APU. And you can go ahead, and this is personal preference. And as you get more established with flying and, and experience different things, it's your choice that whether or not you want to turn the APU off at this point um, I just because of especially with X planes 11 um, a lot of scenarios are kind of realistic with bird strikes and so on and so forth so <clears throat> I generally now um, will leave my APU on until I take off and gears up and you know my flaps are up and and once I've cleared basically the airport that's when I turn it off but you can turn it off whenever you want so if you turn it off now You'll see it's winding down, but you'll, this is important over here. Make sure that when you turn your APU off, you turn your vents on to allow the airflow, and you'll see these needles come up, and you can close this one. <clears throat> but this is in case of an emergency, your engines are going to automatically try to restart if something happens. If you don't put the air through here, there's nothing. There's no. There's no air in the ducts to provide that to sp the spin and to, to fire up. So, you need to turn on your left and your right uh, air duct pressure or air duct flow over there. So it will restart. And that's that's it. Um, you know your lights. Turn your lights on here. And these are taxi lights. So. You know, you can see the taxi, the runway turn off. These are your main lights, um, and all that stuff. Again, it's not a necessity to to start the aircraft, but you'll you'll learn that as it goes. But that's that's all you need to know to start the aircraft, and then you're you're up and running, and you're ready to go. So that is how you start up the stock 737 that comes with X Planes 11. And I hope that you enjoy the video, and please subscribe to my channel. It helps out. And if you have any questions, as always, just put it in the comments, and I will I definitely get to them within 24 hours. And if I need to make a special video for, you know, assistance or needed more, you know, guides, I have no problem doing that. So I thank you for watching, and have a good day.